Welcome everyone to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program Release 1.0.5. Now with Val and Bill on uh, Minmus Station 1, Jeb has got rather bored. So he's accepted a couple of contracts to test these two engines. Uh, we can see the contracts right here, the Rhino engine and the Mammoth engine, and they have to be tested landed at Kerbin. Uh, which is exactly where we are. You can see KSC there in the background. Now to test engines you don't actually need any fuel, particularly when they are sitting here on the launch pad at KSC. Simply right click and run test, right click and run test, and Jeb's boredom is satisfied, at least for a few minutes. So let's pop over and see Gene and see if he has anything else for us. Well, we can see that Gene has been hard at work. Um, here we have uh, Tasia Space Technology have prepared us a contract to position a satellite in a specific orbit of Kerbin, um, five million meters uh, on one uh, apoapsis and then four and a half million meters on the periapsis with a slight inclination. It has to be a new unmanned probe with an antenna uh, and it can also generate power, uh, so we'll need an antenna and probably solar panels. Uh, we need to arrive at our designated orbit within a reasonable deviation. But as a special requirement, we have to have a materials bay on board. So we may as well take some other science with us as well and see if we can boost this poultry for science. But we will be getting almost 90,000 funds, and it's funds we need. Uh, so that's one contract, so let's accept that one. But they've also got this contract, which is to take a picture of the sun. Now, we can do that from anywhere uh, using a space telescope, but I'm assuming that means it must be in space. Now it doesn't give us much funds, but it does give us one heck of a lot of science. So if we can combine both of these contracts, we will get bonus funds and bonus science. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'll see you in the VAB. Now it's going to be an unmanned probe, so we'll start off with one of these two probe cores. We'll start off with this one. Uh, and the next thing we need to look at is the space telescope. So let's have a look, space telescope. We've got uh, the planetary survey camera, but that's not the one I am looking for. I'm looking for this, the uh, Tarsia Space Technology Space Telescope. Now it's actually quite large. Um, it doesn't really fit onto the top of this probe, but We'll see what we can do. Uh, let's see, we can probably use our offset tool just to position it, I think, a little bit more neatly inside the probe core. So it doesn't look like it's kind of standing out so much. Maybe that, uh, maybe that'll do. Okay, so that looks a little bit neater, uh, a little bit more tidy, but now we need to build the rest of the probe. Now we're going to need quite a lot of fuel and quite a lot of delta V in this section to get out to quite uh, quite a large uh, radii around Kerbin. So what are we going to do? So we need quite a bit of fuel and we also need our materials bay. And we can check this by looking down here at our list of uh, contract requirements. Uh, so we've got to have a materials bay. Now we could go with the rather large Science Junior, but that is rather bulky given that uh, we're only trying to get that uh, materials bay simply to be there. We don't even have to use it, it just has to be there. So we do have another option. We have these universal storage uh, pods. Uh, and we have one somewhere, where we go, orbital telescope, antenna, there we go, Science Junior. And these are quite small little uh, pods, uh, and they fit on a spine. So let's go and find ourselves the spine that we need, little octo, uh, is it quad? Quad, not octo, quad. Uh, let's have a look, quad, no, not quartz, quad. Uh, there we go, this is a little quad core spine. 
Uh, and so that fits underneath there. So if we now go back and have a look at our science parts, uh, we can see how these fit on. So there's our science junior parts. Let's uh, slap that on there. So you see these fit into the four wedge-shaped modules, but again, that doesn't look particularly neat and tiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an adapter. So let's go to structural and get ourselves one of these small adapters and that fits it doesn't fit perfectly but it does fit better so that is the minimum we require for that particular requirement to have the materials bay on board but we may as well take some more so what options do we have well we saw uh, we've got antennas there's a science junior we've got an orbital telescope so we've got another type of telescope from uh, D Magic, so that's a, a nice orbital sort of satellite kind of thing we can use. That solar particle collector sounds like a good thing if we're going to be taking pictures of the sun. And then we've got uh, one more. Soil moisture, no. Multi-imaging, what's this? Uh, used to study the surface and, con uh, and composition of planets. Uh, but it has a limited maximum altitude of 300,000 meters, which is uh, not enough, or rather <laughs> we will be well outside of that. So what else have we got? Storage, a magnetometer boom, uh, max altitude 60 kilometers. Uh, what else? Uh, universal so gore set. Uh, monitors the total light reflected from a planet's surface can only be used from high orbit. Well, we'll definitely be in high orbit. Uh, so let's try putting that on. So that gives us four science uh, modules, including uh, the mandatory materials bay. Now, we have to either transmit or recover our science data. So we've got to build, uh, bear that in mind as well. And of course, we will always need our scriptable control system to help with launch and maneuvering and we'll probably want batteries as well just to keep us going so let's have a look batteries is my little filter for batteries so we'll put a little battery under there uh, so that'll give us a little bit of charge when we are outside of uh, the uh, the sun's uh, sh well, outside the sun shadow, inside the sun shadow, the shadow of Kerbin, the eclipse of Kerbin with the sun. But when we're not, we will need to be raising, uh, we'll need to be raising some charge somehow. So let's get two of these panels on either side like so, so we can recharge our battery. So that is that. So we can now recharge our battery. Next, I think we need to take care of our Delta V requirements. So we need a tank. We need quite a big tank. Uh, so let's go for the FLT 400. Uh, but we won't need much thrust because it's relatively small. And this Spark liquid fuel engine is quite efficient. Uh, 300 ISP in a vacuum. You can see there on the right-hand side. So that will probably do us. Uh, it is quite tiny, so it looks relatively small, but actually, I think it's probably everything we need. So we've now got quite a big space for us to fill out uh, other parts. Uh, so, for example, uh, we can have a look for our can't do without uh, photovoltaic panels. Uh, we'll have four of those, so we get some charge uh, even if these are not deployed. Uh, so that is good. Now we need to be able to transmit. Uh, so let's have a look at our antenna. Uh, so there we go. We've got our comms DTS M1 antenna. Now we don't need four of those. One will be uh, more than sufficient. So let's put one of those on uh, because we are going to be at quite a high altitude above Kerbin. So we will need the additional range uh, that this will give us. So hopefully that will be good. Uh, for a little bit of role play, we will also stick on a tiny little uh, communitron uh, just for our short range 
uh, transmission, so we'll use that as well. Uh, so that's just a little bit of role play there. And I think we've more or less got this down to a T as far as the actual satellite goes. Uh, so that's got two and a half thousand delta V in this section. Uh, so, uh, oh, one thing we do need, go back to the science section, is we do need a Kerbal Engineering system. Uh, we'll hide that around this side, just to give us all our Kerbal Engineer redux readouts as we ascend. So there we go, two and a half uh, thousand delta, uh, delta V, two and a half thousand meters per second. So that should be good for our uh, basic satellite, our basic probe. Uh, okay, so let's get this thing launched into orbit. So we need a launch stage. Uh, so let's get ourselves a decoupler. Uh, this should be good. Uh, it doesn't quite fit because it's the wrong dimension for the engine. So let's see if we can go down to the smaller one. Here we go, the TR2V stack decoupler. That's the right size. Oh, just missed. That's the right size for this particular vehicle. Uh, we will need, uh, yep, we will need from uh, the aerodynamics section, we will need a fairing uh, base. There we go. There's our fairing base. Does that fit? I think it just about does. Yeah, I think that fits around uh, the telescope. Uh, let's increase the number of nodes. I prefer uh, four nodes. We've got four-way symmetry on the fairing, so that's that. And next, let's build out our launch vessel. Uh, let's not skimp. So let's put two of these FLT 800 uh, fuel tanks uh, with our usual LVT-30 Reliant engine on the base. Uh, let's just sort out the sta staging just there. So that's got us 5,000 uh, meters per second of delta V, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure if that's actually gonna be enough because we've got to put the fairing on the top yet and we're already quite low on our uh, thrust to weight ratio. So I'm gonna do the usual asparagus staging, I think. So let's go and find our radial decoupler. We'll have two of those. Put them down here on the base like so. Uh, next, we shall have our uh, fuel tanks. We shall get, here we go, let's get two of these fuel tanks again with the uh, Reliant engine on the base. And let's just finish off the asparagus staging using the fuel duct. There we go, the fuel duct. So let's make sure we have fuel traveling from the outer tanks to the inner tanks. There we go. So we've now got 6,000 Delta V and that should be, that should be plenty, I think. 6,000 Delta V should be good. So let's finish off the aerodynamics, get on our nose cones, and get on our egg-shaped fairings. So there we go, so that's the fairings all sorted out. So that should also be the majority of the weight of our vehicle, so we should be quite confident that this is actually the Delta V we're going to get. Next, I think we need to sort out our staging, which is clearly wrong, because we've got the egg-shaped fairings uh, being detached uh, from the get-go. So let's swap over uh, our order of our fairings with our engine. So let's put the fairings up here. So what we will now have is we have our outer and inner engines uh, firing at once. Uh, when the fuel is exhausted, uh, the outer tanks will be ejected. Then we can manually eject the fairing. And finally, we can separate out our um, satellite here at the top. Uh, and that brings us down to just under 6,000 delta V. Now I think we should have some AVR8 winglets to help with steering. And pro they weigh a fair bit, so that brings us down, down another 120 odd delta V. Uh, next, 
we shall go for our launch stability enhancers. We'll have just two of those, one on either side. Make sure those two are in the right stage. There we go. Now I think the only thing we have left is a few little tweaks. Let's call them tweaks, shall we? So let's save the craft first. We'll call it uh, a Sun 1. Let's save that. Now the little tweaks I'm going to use are actually uh, little tweaks to do with action groups. Now we don't actually have action groups researched yet so I'm going to cheat and what we're going to do is we're going to use the action groups for the lights to trigger our extendable parts. Uh, so let's uh, extend our panels and extend our antenna. So that one and here we go the communitron on this side and finally, uh, I think we'll leave the telescope until we are in situ uh, and see how that will work when we arrive. So let's just nip back, uh, finish off uh, with our egg-shaped fairing, which I had to take off. So let's just plant that back on. Um, where are we? Oh, I think I've still got a spare piece of egg-shaped fairing somewhere. There we go. Get rid of that. Just reposition that fairing set in the stages. Double check, there's our three engines and our stability enhancers. Uh, if we come back a bit, there are our um, radial decouplers, fairings, and finally our satellite there at the top. So let's just save that and get on out to the launch pad. Now, if we check out on the contract list, our orbit specifics. Uh, at the moment we're not too interested in apoapsis or periapsis but we are interested in the inclination. Now that's something I have programmed into my uh, KOS Ascend script so let's uh, run that script. Now I have actually updated it for the latest version of KOS which includes a built-in PID controller just saves a little bit of code on the user side since it's now a built-in function so hence we're running uh, Ascend 8 we are going to go to a hundred thousand uh, meters for our uh, intended maximum height, our apoapsis height for the launch, and we are going to go to 13.5 uh, inclination, degrees of inclination. Now the best time to do that is on either your ascending or descending node, depending on whether you're going to go plus or minus uh, 13.5 degrees, depending on whether you're going north or south. So let's just have a look at our orbit. There we go. You can see in map view the intended orbit. This is the orbit that we're trying to hit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go plus uh, 13.5 degrees. And so uh, I want to launch underneath the descending node because if I launch underneath the ascending node and I'm going at uh, 13.5 degrees in this direction I will have far less of an adjustment to, lay, to, to make when I get into orbit. So we're just going to accelerate time just a little bit and get our launch site right underneath the descending node in this case. Uh, so let's just Bring it up, so that's time warp 100. So it's coming round, and we want to get it right between the ascending and descending node, so I can go up at plus 13.5 degrees. Then I won't need to make an inclination change when I'm in orbit. So there we go, so I'm right underneath. There we go, right underneath, eyeball underneath the ascending and descending nodes, the descending node in this case, so I can run my script which I can do from map mode if I so choose so let's just pop back out of map mode and have a look at the launch so uh, here we go we have uh, cleared uh, the tower we've got a little bit of oscillation in um, a little bit of oscillation there which hopefully will settle down as we complete our ascend uh, our ascension stage so uh, just a little bit concerned, but I think we are under control. 
<laughs> until until it explodes halfway up. But uh, we'll soon see. We will soon see. So uh, as you can see, the uh, script has now taken control of calculating the throttle in order to keep our actual thrust to weight ratio at around about two, which is uh, ideal for uh, the ascent part of our launch. So uh, hopefully this rather uh, eccentric rotation won't hurt us. You can just see we have now lost our initial asparagus stage. We are <laughs> undulating and oscillating quite hysterically but with any luck we will still hit our target inclination of 13 and a half degrees and we will still hit our apoapsis height of a hundred kilometers. That's only a temporary apoapsis. We will obviously have to meet the rest of our orbit parameters at some point, but let's just get ourselves into orbit first. We seem to have we seem to have settled down, so I think we should be a okay. Cross fingers. So we are now cruising to our apoapsis of 100 because we've reached our desired inclination of 30 degrees, which is a, a fixed uh, inclination above the horizon for this part of the ascent. So we are now at 72 kilometers. Going up to 100 is our target. 85, 90. And engine should cut out round about now. There we go. So we have engine cut off and we can release our fairings in order to look at, in all its glory, our relatively simple probe. Okay, well, next things uh, next. Uh, let's run our circularization script. Uh, and that will give us a manoeuvre node to point at in order to complete the circularization phase. It's not entirely essential. We could drive out towards our intended orbit directly from here, but uh, it doesn't make much difference. So let's just get ourselves into orbit. Safely into orbit is a good start. So now that we're well outside of the atmosphere, I will extend our extendable parts and I will run the node execution script that will execute the node that we just chose. Now we did pre-align as we've done before. Uh, the KOS script has now taken over the alignment function and will lock us in to our maneuver node. And we have a uh, 38 second burn of just a smidgen under 1,000 meters per second. And we have, across all our stages, a grand total of uh, 3,683 meters per second. So hopefully that will be a, uh, well, a lot uh, for the task at hand. Now we've only got 892 meters per second in this stage, so it will be staging. Uh, so we will see how that goes. Now, we're waiting for burn at T minus 19, so uh, we've got about eight seconds left before the burn begins, and the burn will be beginning and will be done mainly with the rest of our lower stage fuel and our Reliant engine, so this should go down pretty promptly. about a third of the way through our burn. It's about half. So we're coming up to the point at which it will stage. Ouch! Ah, jeez! Um. <laughs> well, we seem to be in one piece, or at least the important part of our vehicle is in one piece, uh, the uh, satellite. Um, yeah. Now I do seem to remember that I've forgotten something. 
and um, <laughs> we'll see if anybody else remembers what I have forgotten at the end of this mission. Okay, fine. We are now circularized. So now if we come out into map view, we can see that we are pretty much, pretty much on the right inclination. I know it says 11.6. We're not quite right. We didn't quite get the inclination right, but it is pretty darn close. So I think what we're going to do next is we are going to put another maneuver node here. Let's just center on Kerbin, put another maneuver node uh, around about here and just send out our apoapsis to approximately the right distance. So we want uh, 5,289. So let's get 5,2, let's get 5,2 something. Probably not important to be too perfect at this point because we are going to have to make quite a few adjustments. So let's just warp around to that maneuver node and get ourselves ready to execute it. So clicking on the handle gives us a three minute warning. You see time warp is coming down as we approach three minutes. We have a two minute burn of 748 meters per second. So let's get ourselves ready to execute this node. There we go, we're on the node. Get our KOS uh, console back up and run that node. So the burn duration is 130.9 uh, seconds and we will be doing the pre-align at two minutes and five seconds. So let's just move that along. So there we go, the script has taken over alignment. And let's move forward to the actual execution, which is one minute and five. So 10 more seconds to go. And there we go. So you can hear the burn in the background. You can see as we start to expand our apoapsis out towards our target. So we will return to this vessel once this maneuver is complete. Well, the last few meters of Delta V are being uh, expelled from our engine. And there we go. It snaps out to the target apoapsis there. So let's just bring ourselves a little bit out. Uh, there we go, 5-1. So that's pretty good, but it is a little bit high, so we are going to have to deal with that. That's the little problem with the sort of two degrees missing off our intended inclination, but we can sort that out a little bit later. So uh, next thing I think we need to do is add another maneuver on the apoapsis, and this time we're going to take our periapsis out to the far side of our intended orbit. So there we go. So let's have a look. It's supposed to be uh, 4.5. We're a little bit over, so let's just bring that back again. There we go. 4.7, 4.6, 4.8, 4.9. Four, so we can improve that uh, a little bit later. You can see how we are slightly twisted, so we are going to have to make a correction burn when we get again to either our descending node or ascending node to correct the 2.2 uh, degrees that we are off. So we have another node to execute. Uh, so let's get our node execution program uh, running. So let's run that, uh, that script. It's uh, going to be a 54 second uh, burn. So let's get ourselves right out to our node right out here. Why can't I click on it? Why can't I click? Now, I can't click on the handle because if I click on the handle, I'll actually be clicking through the handle of the node and going right up to the apoapsis. It's just one of those little features. 
Uh, so let's just warp to here. So let's warp our vehicle all the way around to a point on the orbit. So there we go. Uh, warping around here to the apoapsis point. There we go. We still have 15 minutes to go and it's only going to be uh, a 54 second burn. So we are going to uh, pre-align, then we're going to let the script take over at 1 minute 27. So let's just go and pre-align, get ourselves lined up. There we go. And then let's use a little bit of manual time warping to bring us around to about 1 minute 30. Nine, eight, seven, six. There's four, three. Come down with time warp. So there's two when it's thirty. So there we go. So the uh, script is taken over again, and we're now going to burn on the twenty-seven. So let's just move it forward a little bit. And a 50. And there we go. Maneuver to start now. Again, we can see our periapsis expanding. So we'll pop back when this maneuver is finished. Now we're nearing the end of this burn now. There we go. Last few meters per second uh, expelled. Let's go back into map mode and we can see we're pretty close, but probably not close enough. Uh, main tool. <laughs> we have indeed. That was actually a pretty good guess. So uh, we did get within uh, the uh, designated orbit around Kerbin within a reasonable deviation. So actually 2.2 uh, uh, degrees was within the expected deviation. So that's pretty good. Uh, we've got our periapsis and apoapsis pretty close anyway, so we have now completed uh, this contract. Remember, we just had to have a materials bay. We didn't actually have to do any science whatsoever, uh, so uh, that's good. Let's get on and do our second contract. So let's uh, go and have a look at our uh, let's go and have a look at our camera. Uh, at the moment, it's in its collapsed uh, state. So let's uh, open our camera, right click and open our camera. There we go. Uh, now, at this point, I really should give the obligatory, uh, the obligatory warning that you should never look directly at the sun. Uh, never look at the sun with a telescope, never look at the sun with a binoculars, cameras, magnifying glasses, or anything of that type. Uh, whatever you do, don't do it. That said, that's exactly what we're going to do in KSP using this telescope right here. So let's just rotate ourselves around. There we go. We can just about see it there in the center of the screen. Let's see if we can uh, get it centered. There we go, that's nearly centered. And let's zoom in, see if we can get a better picture. I think we can just about see uh, the corona there. Can I move it back a bit, there we go. Zoom in a little bit more, times 20. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. Nice close-up shot with the space telescope. Let's. Uh, well, I'll tell you what we do. Why don't we save this picture to a file? Let's see if we can get it just very slightly more centered. There we go. Just just about get that lovely corona and uh, all those coronal ejections that you can see right there at the top. You can even see a few tiny little sunspots, or maybe that's just dirt on my screen. Anyway, let's take that picture. There we go. Collected science uh, for the sun and the picture has been saved. So all we need to do now is uh, see if the transmitters work. Uh, let's see if we can... Uh, let's hide that now and let's uh, close it up and then see if we can uh, close the camera and then transmit some science back. Let's go and collect some science that we have in these bays. So let's toggle the shutter 
uh, for the orbital telescope. So let's do that as well. There we go. So we should be able to log some visual observations. Oh, there's no science uh, left at this altitude for that experiment. So we might as well reset it and then close it up. So let's uh, toggle the shutter. Uh, so that was a bit of uh, waste of uh, space. There we go. <laughs> waste of space. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, next, uh, what, are the, what else have we got? We've got a solar particle collector. So let's uh, toggle the collectors, uh, open them up, and uh, see what we can gather with uh, this experiment. So let's collect some solar particles. Uh, we're going to have to transmit it because we're not recovering this vehicle. So let's uh, transmit that. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, we have got, um, where are we going? We have got, uh, we can log in a radiance scan. There we go. Oh, we can transmit all of that. So let's transmit all of that. Uh, let's uh, toggle the scanners. Oops, there we go. We might as well toggle those while we are here. There we go, let's toggle those collectors. And finally, what? Uh, oh, we did do a mystery goo, didn't we? We've got a science junior in here, a mini science junior. So let's observe the materials bay. Uh, not much science left, so uh, we may as well reset that experiment. So what we have to do now is see how do we uh, how do we transmit the um, check the results. There we go. We can smell burning. Yes, we probably can. So let's uh, transmit that science and see if we get any transmission. Doesn't look like we are. Doesn't look like the transmission is working. Now I wonder if that's because we are not in line of sight towards. Uh, Kerbin. So we're going to have to come back and rectify that in another episode. So with that said, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. And if you can guess what I forgot, put it in the comments below. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>